What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to another reaction. Today we have What If The Earth Got Kicked Out Of The Solar System. Hey, this is a video about space and stuff. You already know I love my space. The night sky seems peaceful and orderly. But in reality, stars are careening through the galaxy at speeds of hundreds of thousands of kilometers per hour. Not bound by static formations, but changing neighborhoods constantly. Fortunately, space is big, and so the stars of the Milky Way are Just very misses unlikely us. to hit us. Unfortunately, they don't have to hit anything to make us have a really bad time on Earth. And there are already stars. Oh, star I've seen something like this. Like, so something in space could change the way that we orbit. Oh, Bro, that'd be very mad. Close. Just sends us off course and we go rogue. Oh my god, imagine. To understand how dangerous stars are to us, we need to talk about gravity. Gravity attracts every piece of matter to every other piece of matter in the universe. You are attracted by an atom a million light years away and vice versa. Luckily, this force gets weaker over distance, and it also depends on how massive something is. So things that are close and are very massive are more attractive, winning the cosmic tug of war. This way, mass it's uh, like when you think about it, it's actually so weird how like gravity to works, isn't to it? Find how smaller things behave around them. The sun makes up 99.75% of all the mass in the solar system, and so it shapes the behavior and orbits of everything else in it. Billions of years ago, after the sun was born, the solar system was a chaotic and dangerous place as the planets were formed from countless little pieces that collided constantly. But over the eons, a stable balance emerged. Today, most planets and asteroids have settled into safe and predictable orbits. We have the inner and outer planets, the asteroid and... Hey, Kuiper hey, that's, that's a good parent son right there, man, looking after all the kids. And at the edge, the Oort cloud, a giant sphere of comets orbiting slowly in cold storage. Oh, shit, that's mad. We really don't want this balance to be disturbed. What the fuck? If another star came too close to us, its gravity would pull on everything in the solar system like a spoiled toddler. Messing up the pleasant order of the planets and asteroids and comets. Yo! This isn't some imaginary danger. Some 70,000 years ago, a red dwarf brown dwarf binary system passed through the Oort cloud and messed things up. It might even have sent a deadly onslaught of asteroids our way. But it could take two million years until those visitors from the Oort cloud arrive in the inner Holy solar system. Shit! But there's a much bigger problem on the horizon. Gliese 710, a red dwarf with about half the mass of the sun, is currently headed towards the solar system. Oh, great. In about a million years, it'll pass through the Oort cloud and become the brightest star in the night sky. A close flyby like this would unfold over hundreds of thousands of years, disrupting the orbits of millions of objects in the Oort cloud considerably. If we're unlucky, it will trigger a new period of planetary bombardment similar to the early solar system the night sky could be filled with comets and asteroids raining down on the inner solar system. Oh, sick. You know what? <laughs> um, unfortunately, or fortunately enough, I won't uh, be here in a million years, I don't think. So, uh, this could cause dinosaur level that's mass not for me to fucking be scared be about, but that's scary as hell. But it could get much worse. The galaxy is an intense place, and stars get close to each other regularly. So it is possible that a star could come much closer and not just pass us, but fly directly through the inner solar system. Bro, what the fuck? This would be very bad in the extreme. The chance of another star colliding with the sun is astronomically unlikely, but that isn't what we're worried about. If another star were to... No, yeah, what we're worried about is it's taking fucking Earth for a ride, mate, and we're going with that other sun. By about as close as That's what we're worried sun, about. It could easily eject the Earth from the solar system. The odds of such an event are estimated to be around 1 in 100,000 in the next 5 billion years. That is Small, at, but okay. not absurd. In, in 5 billion years, uh, yeah. As we discussed bad. in another video, there seem to be billions of rogue planets doing their own thing in the galaxy, and this is one way to make them. So if this were to happen with an average red dwarf, what would happen on Earth? Kicking Earth out of the solar system. As the star enters the solar system, How would a small we survive orangish that? dot appears in the sky that grows bigger and bigger for months, eventually becoming visible during the day. It would get bigger and much brighter than the moon. Too bright to look at directly. The night sky would be filled with an eerie red glow. After a few months, it would start shrinking again. But so would the sun. 
Over a few years, the sun slowly grows smaller Holy in the sky, shit. and when it warmth and light start to dissipate. All around the world, bro, how fucking scary would that be? As the days turn dark, like, like, listen, 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 right? We never think, like, we never sit here and think, oh my god, like, okay, so we're orbiting around the sun and stuff, right? Fair enough, we're we're, we're at a fixed point, kind of. We're not at a fixed point, but you know what I mean, right? Now, if you hear on the news that we are drifting in the universe by ourselves, then you would constantly think how scary it is. You, you'd feel like you're more on a ride, right? Like, oh, what if I bump into this? Or what if we end up here? What, bro, it would be fucking scary, man. The final winter of it would be scary, would bro. The polar ice caps begin to grow and spread while plants shrivel and die. Forests freeze and animals die in droves. Aww. As the Earth passes the orbit of Mars, the average surface temperature has plummeted to near minus 50 degrees Celsius. From space, Holy Earth shit. begins to look like an icy moon. The blue-green surface all dead? becoming the pale grey-white of death. As global infrastructure breaks down, people huddle together indoors, burning what they can for warmth as the temperature continues to drop, counting the days We're not until dead they'll yet. be out of food which no longer grows. Everybody living at the surface is living on borrowed time. By the time Earth reaches Jupiter's orbit, surface temperatures sink to minus 150 degrees Celsius, lower than the coldest ever recorded temperatures in Antarctica. Needless to say, by now, almost everyone is dead. Yeah. Without the energy from sunlight to evaporate water... Don't you think, like, by the time that this happens, we have some sort of way to, you know, produce heat? like stored energy or Bounds something don't form and the water cycle stops the polar ice caps eventually touch at the equator and the oceans become covered in a thick layer of ice as more and more of its heat leaks out more water oh my god we'll just have to do what the other planets uh, uh we i watched a planet video um it was like a week ago or something and like they were saying that life could be underneath the ice so you see like the ice here like we could just go deep under the ice where it's warm and become like ocean people <laughs> to freezes onto the bottom of the ice sheet the concentration of salt in the deep ocean grows poisoning most animals that survived here oh uh, okay now although around maybe we get like events, a dome communities of extremophiles might adapt even to these circumstances Big. Deep below the surface, some bacteria would not notice much of any of this as they're still kept warm by the radioactive decay yeah. of elements in the Earth's core. Hey, we just got to go near there. As the Earth reaches the orbit of near Pluto the and the Kuiper Belt, the sun is still the brightest star in the sky, but it's one among many, with stars now visible during the day. The temperature is now barely 40 degrees Celsius above absolute zero, below Bro, the freezing temperature mad. of the gases in the atmosphere. A weird spectacle, enjoyed by no one unfortunately, unfolds as the atmosphere turns into nitrogen and then oxygen snow. Over a few years, it's deposited into an icy 10 meter thick sheet all over the planet's surface with only a thin whisper of gas remaining. The frozen corpses of flora and fauna are buried beneath them. As Earth leaves the solar system, it becomes a rogue planet traveling alone through the dark. Bro, maybe the other rogue planets out there is where life was, bro. Dark, lifeless and in solitude. But weirdly enough, there is hope. <laughs> Humanity would not be surprised by this potential extinction event. We'd notice it thousands of years in advance. There's not a lot we could do to stop a star, but we could prepare. Yeah, that's what I'm Most saying. Most of like us would perish. But a few million could survive in huge artificial complexes powered by geothermal and nuclear energy, possibly Holy even fusion, if we can learn to use the ice around us for power. Here, humanity might survive for hundreds of thousands of years. At some point... Yeah, I feel like we'll figure out a way how to survive. I really do. We would become used to our circumstances, and new generations would watch documentaries in disbelief about the time we had our own star Bro, and yeah. could walk the oh my surface God. of Earth. Oh my god. And at some point, we might decide to look for another home. If the Earth were lucky enough to pass by another star with a habitable planet, we could try to make a fresh start. Space flight, oddly enough, would become very easy without the atmosphere in the way. So it's not unthinkable that the last survivors would leave Earth behind and try again on a new planet around a new star. Maybe one day, thousands of years later, the descendants of humanity will tell legends about Earth's ancient past. Stories of our lost home.
of a mysterious icy planet floating alone and empty through the dark of space. Bro, that's crazy, so man. Holy shit. The key to humanity's survival it's so cool is learning about what we'll be dealing with. Well, we'd better get cracking then. Our friends from Brilliant... Right, really, really, really good video. I really enjoyed that one. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it too. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. If you guys got any videos you want to recommend, link them down in the comment section below. And I'll see you all in the next video.